Welcome to this video where we show you some algae issues that we are experiencing and what we're going to do about them. If you enjoy this video, please hit the like and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. Preventing algae is always better than treating it and you can see our top 5 algae prevention tips video linked in the pinned comment and description. You can also see a video that goes into more detail about the plants and equipment in this layout which is also linked. Once we have algae, it's important to understand the cause as well as treating the algae itself. Without rectifying the underlying issues that led to the algae, it will simply return. In this Awase Starline 85 aquarium that holds 75 litres or 20 US gallons, we are experiencing Spirogyra type algae attached to the leaves of the Microsorum. Spirogyra is a green filamentous algae that has over 400 species. It's more common in high energy planted aquariums as well as ponds where it is commonly known as blanket weed. It is known to be triggered by an imbalance of light and nutrients and or poor CO2 management. In our case it could have been a combination of factors including the aquascape layout being immature with relatively little plant biomass. All of the plants in here are slow growing epiphyte species so may not have the capacity to outcompete with the algae. A simple solution here could be to add some floating plants. These grow fast due to their position near the light and access to CO2 in the air. They also limit some light reach in the bottom of the aquarium which will reduce algae growth. It's important to avoid too much shade though otherwise this could impact on the plant growth. In our case, all of the species are low light tolerant, so this shouldn't be an issue. Another contributing factor to the algae could be that the CO2 distribution is poor due to the position of the CO2 diffuser. If some plants have better access to CO2 than others, this can lead to some unhealthy plant growth and therefore leaving the door open for potential algae. Our solution here is to simply move the CO2 diffuser into a more suitable location where the water flow from the filter outlet can distribute the CO2 microbubbles more effectively. This can also be done in combination with moving the filter outlet to get optimal results. The overall aim is to achieve a circulation pattern that best moves the water and CO2 for optimal plant growth, which in turn helps prevent algae growth. So now we have addressed two areas that will help further prevent algae growth, we can now remove the current algae. Some sources will recommend dosing a so-called liquid carbon product that contains glutahaldehyde or treating with hydrogen peroxide but we only recommend these potentially harmful products in extreme cases. In here we simply remove as much of the algae as possible with our fingers or a toothbrush. It's important to be vigilant and remove even the smallest amounts otherwise it will just grow right back. After we've removed as much algae as possible it's vital to follow up with a large water change and filter clean. These will help to permanently remove any residual algae that would have been free floating in the aquarium. Now the aquarium has been maintained and hopefully optimised to be able to fight off future algae attacks. We should observe the plants regularly for any signs of new algae growth. If new algae occurs it may be a case of continuing the process of manual removal and water changes until the system is balanced in favour of healthy plant growth over the algae. We will keep you updated on how this aquarium progresses with the algae issues. We hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. Do you have any tips on how to deal with spirogyra algae? What other types of algae would you like us to cover in future videos? Take care, bye for now.